What's up guys, this is Fish here as always bringing you part one of my tutorial series on melon farming. Now today I'm going to be talking about manual farming which is just planting your seeds and harvesting them as they grow by hand or with an axe or sword if you prefer. Now when it comes to this kind of a manual farm the only concerns you should have are how large a plot you're going to use and the layout of the plot. Now in my experience the best plot to use is one that is nine blocks wide like this that's what I forgot we also need your home as always now this I found is by far the most efficient way of doing it because there's one water block and there's four plants and that's it that's what I think is the most efficient melon farming plot out there. Like nine wide. Yeah, uh, if you want to make more, then again you just put another nine on the side of it like this. So you can make it eighteen wide, twenty seven wide. As long as it's a multiple of nine, perfectly fine. You can make it one long, you can make it five long, you can even make it fifteen long. All that really matters is that your plot is a multiple of 9 wide and in this configuration. Me personally, I like to use plots that are 8 long. So let's get that set up. So that's basic manual wheat. Ah, shoot, I keep saying that. Why do I keep saying wheat? That's a manual melon harvesting plot. 9 wide by 8 long by what? Too tall. Let's get a border around it. Just to pretty it up. Even though stone's not exactly the prettiest thing to use. Now if you're like me and you're occasionally worried that you're going to step on or jump on your crops then here's a little trick for you. You get some glass put it over the top of your crops. You can put a transparent block over your crops and they will still grow perfectly fine. They'll still produce blocks. That's why we're using glass, because it's a transparent block. And it's also solid, so you can't walk on or jump on them. Good for keeping the kids from wrecking your garden, am I right? But yes, once all the blocks grow in, then we can get to harvesting. Oh, also, if you're worried about um, items falling into the water in the middle. Nice little aesthetic trick and also functional. Cover it up with lily pads. That way you can walk across it, items won't fall in. So we'll wait for all these blocks to get in. I am afraid I've missed a very crucial point in melon farming. That being that you need the the crops themselves, they need to be lit. Now, what I recommend is expensive but it's better than using torches. I don't like torches. So what we can use is glowstone. Now you don't need too much glowstone. Probably eight will do it. Just line them up like this and they should light keep everything yes they should keep everything very well lit. Okay so now that our blocks have all grown in we've got our lighting up. This farm is complete. Now it's time to harvest and see what kind of a yield we're looking at. Uh, I like to use axes for harvesting this, but you can use your hands. Swords work well, I think. But we'll use axes for the time being. And let's see what we're looking at. Well, there you go. It's pushed us It's pushed us over two and a half stacks. So 32 melons in a plot like this will give you two stacks and close to a half, maybe a bit more, of melon slices. Now, if you want, you can craft them into melon seeds or you can eat them. Whichever works. And that's the end of the tutorial for the manual melon farm. Of course, any time I've said melon or used melons, you can substitute in pumpkins. And that's the most efficient way to make a manual melon farm. Now, this setup will become important later on in the series, when I get onto some more complex machines, simply because of its efficiency. The nine wide, however long, melon plot. As always, I'm Fish. And I'll see you next episode when we cover semi-automatic farms. Should be interesting. See you then.